or what, with their mom. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. 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 One thirty-three. One thirty-three. No, he said he knew that. I I got you. Testimony on your heart. They want to share with us. Amen. God bless you, sis. She says, someone else. God bless you, says, someone else.
Because after she left, you know, it's her. She seemed to come in and address the tents she was in her life. But I just want to thank the Lord for... I, I left my house today at 2 o'clock, and um, my kids, thank God, I'm not capable of going anywhere by myself. <laughs> I went all the way to Walmart, and then I stopped at the grocery store, and I was there about 10 minutes, and I got back in the car, and I looked at my watch, and I thought, hmm, it's only 6 o'clock. I got time to get to church, but I started to stop at home. So I just came on to church, and I called them. They said, well, we wouldn't have known you'd gone if you hadn't come home. Oh. <laughs> 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 and I was to me and pay a big to where I go. <laughs> God bless you, sis. Glad to have you. Someone else? Been a good place to be, amen? amen. Anyone else? I'll stand and say I love the Lord this evening. I thank Him for everything He does for me. Watch over me. Where I've been. Love the church people. Anyone else? You ever had the Lord put something on your heart? Keep trying to push it away? Yeah. Once you say something, and then you as a person might think you make somebody mad. But I'm going to say something this evening. Brother. You might get mad, but you still got to love me. Amen. You still got to love me. First of all, I went to see this person Sunday. Talked to him. Oh, I just love to be back out in God's house. I just love to be there, but I just ain't able. Just ain't able to get off this bed. He was seen somewhere else that following Monday, riding around the store all day. You know, now this is me. I think if you can go to the grocery store, or you can run downtown and go to the bank, you can be here in God's house. Amen. 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 You know, I've always said, I've mentioned it here before, I'm a person watcher. Maybe I shouldn't be. But I watch people. I watch people's we lives. We all do. Yep. And, you know, there's something out there. I ain't, I ain't saying that. Have you ever looked around, though, and see who's defended from it? God's people is one that's afraid. Can I get a hey man on that? God's people was afraid. You see that many people out in the world wanting to hide but the churches are shutting down? Where's our faith at, people? Has God changed in the last year? No. Has God changed in the last year? No. So who has? We have. Amen. Let's pray now between now and next Sunday. Let's get on far for the Lord. Can we do that? Amen. Let's rock the doors. We need to make a stand, people, including me. We need to make a stand and let the world where we're at. Let them know where we're at. You know, I mean, Gary was talking there this evening. One of us might get that COVID. Might kill us. But we're going to be winners here, or what? Amen. Amen. We ought to have faith in our Heavenly Father yeah. instead of the world. Amen. Our Congress. They're just trying to rule, trying to run us, trying to tell us to run our lives. But I've noticed that. Just kind of notice some people, God's people. They'll tell you, they're, they're, they're so afraid. They're so afraid. But they yet they can go to the grocery store or go downtown. The more you're out of church, the more your faith goes down, down, down. Amen. Yep, yep. The more you stay home, the more it gets, the worse it gets. And the easier it is each time, yes. Yep. Has anybody got anything to add? Bless you, Dave.
Okay. I had to get that off my chest, brother. Hey, I agree with you on everything. I agree. David, I want to read two or three verses of scripture. Um, Romans 8, 28, and 6 months to make a vaccine for this cobra. Cancer's been around here for years. And they can't seem to find I don't think they want to. I don't think they want to. That's right. You know, uh it don't kill you. It's complications from it. It's like this COVID-19. It don't kill you, but it's got complications. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a real bad heart or, you know, or whatever. And, but if you get it, God's going to take care of you. Uh -huh. exactly. Like I said there a minute ago, you're going to be a winner either way. One way or the other. One way or the other. Come on, brother. He's done preaching. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 We are in um, Matthew 10, starting at verse 1, right? And no donuts. And no donuts. That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> and when he had called... <laughs> the dough, we got the donuts, they're just right here. <laughs> when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, let me ask you a question and you give me the answer. We know that God has no respect to persons, right? So did God have respect to persons by giving them this special power? I, I know there's
there's a lot of people today that believe that we can do the same things. And I will agree to that to a certain extent. My Bible teaches me that special miracles were wrought by the hands of the apostles. I believe this power that they have here was a temporary thing until they got on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit indwelled them. Nothing can be done without the Spirit. When He gave them this power and authority, it's got to be done through the Holy Ghost in the name of Christ. They could go out there in the name of Peter or in the name of Luke, it wouldn't be Luke, but Matthew or Bartholomew or any of the others and, and do these miracles. It had to be done in the name of Christ. Anything that anyone does that they do to draw attention to themselves is not of God. Uh, I don't know how many of these big faith healers on television have been busted uh, with the new technology that's out now. Uh, I mean, they have busted their can. Uh, supposedly one of them, and I'll not name a name, over in Africa raised a fellow from the dead. If he did, okay. But here's what I know. I don't need a sign from God. Why did, why did they need signs and wonders in that day? We might not get very far in this tonight, but why did they need signs and wonders in that day? They didn't have the Bible. They did not have the scriptures that we have here, this record of the power of God. When we read this book, we are to read it in faith. To accept it in faith. To follow it in faith. That's eyesight. Do I believe that God can heal? Absolutely. I have felt the healing hand of God. I mean, I, I probably have shared this before here, but I remember when Rebecca was a baby, she and I both had really bad chest colds. Mine might even be a sinus infection. And neither one of us could breathe. And that Sunday morning in Sunday school, Brother Jackie Grimm and the elders of Christian Free Will Baptist Church gathered around and wanted Rebecca and I, and I'm telling you, immediately I could breathe better. Immediately Rebecca could breathe better. I know God can heal. I mean, I, I, I've seen it. I mean, the testimonies of Sister Diane Hendricks, and I know she knows who I'm talking about, Bud's daughter. Uh, she had a tumor under her knee, under her kneecap. They scheduled surgery, and the doctor said, all right, now before we go in, we want to do one more scan to find out exactly where this thing's laying at. That way we can do the least amount of damage getting this tumor because it was between her bones and her kneecap and causing her tremendous pain. When they did the scan, there was no tumor. Somewhere between Friday and Monday, long about Sunday, when we prayed over her and morning to her, she, her testimony was this. She said, when you guys, because we actually, she had us uh, actually lay our hands on her knees. She sat on the altar. She had on pants. I want to clarify that, all right? <laughs> and, and we laid hands on her. She said, I felt the fire of God in my knee. I know that God can heal this was for two purposes. Number one, to draw glory to God. Number two, to increase the faith of these disciples. I mean, uh, after all, we've been with Jesus for, for a while now and he finally he wants them to stand on their own two feet. Right? I mean, you, you, a baby doesn't come out of the womb walking. You've got to carry it for a while, right? 
then it begins to roll over. And as it rolls and it rolls and it rolls, the next thing you know, it gets up on its knees and it starts rocking. But it still doesn't start walking. You've got to encourage that child to walk. And that's what... And, and you know how... You, we used to... Uh, with our kids, we would sit really with just about Ron and I's feet touching. She's against one uh, a piece of furniture. I would be against the other one. We would stretch our arms out. And that little child only had to take like two steps to be in the arms of the other one, right? And it's that faith knowing that he's there or uh, whomever is there, if, it, it, if you can make it, God's right there with him. God is right there with them. Two parts, God. Two parts of the Trinity. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And I want you to know, He, God the Holy Spirit is here now. God the Son is in this building now. Don't get mad at me. He's right here. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning. That's John chapter 1 verse 1. And the Word was made flesh and we beheld His glory. So He's always been. He, he was, it wasn't that He was created on the day, uh, come into this world, on the day uh, that He was born there in Bethlehem. He is, he's the one that created the world. So he gives these disciples this power. And now these are the names of the twelve apostles. Are these. The first Simon who is called Peter. Andrew his brother. James the son of Zebedee and John his brother. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the publican. Notice Matthew referred to himself here as the publican. Right? Because this is Matthew's account of the gospel. Uh, James, the son of Alphaeus, uh, and Lebius, whose name was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Boy, wouldn't you hate to have that name after mentioned after every time your name is mentioned? in the scriptures. Uh, there have been a lot of people teaching this week on the radio about the birth of Christ. I mean, that's what all these big preachers do. And they go through the, they all seem like going through the genealogy and bringing up uh, all the different women and stuff. And it, it talked about how that Solomon was David's son who was born of the wife of Uriah. I thought, that's funny. Not David's wife, the wife of Uriah. <laughs> All right. Uh, these twelve, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go get rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and go, as ye go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What's the kingdom of heaven, by the way? Salvation. Huh? There's two kingdoms that are mentioned here in the scriptures, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is when heaven is ruling on earth. Christ the King is here. Right? And the kingdom of heaven is for, get this, the Jews. It will actually be set up when He rules and reigns on the throne of David. The kingdom of God is where God rules upon the throne of men's heart. Or the seat of men's heart. For the kingdom of God is within you and I. Remember, the kingdom of God is not being preached yet because He's going. Don't go to the Gentiles. Why? 
Here's a, he had to go to his own and be rejected of his own. Remember, even after Pentecost, they didn't go to the Gentiles. They went to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Again, they would enter into the synagogues, but they didn't teach the scholars and the doctors and all that after the Scriptures because they didn't want to hear it. They were blinded with religion. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of people like that today. So go, go to the law sheep. Don't go to the Gentiles. It's not time. Don't go to the Samaritans. Who are the Samaritans? The Samaritans are the half-breed. They're half-Gentile and they're half-Jew. The Gentiles won't have them and the Jews won't have them. Don't go to them. Why? It's not time. To the Jew first. Then to the Greek and to the Gentile also. is how Paul said it. Alright? Uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He didn't go out there and say, hey, come, come see Jesus. He didn't go out there and repent. Notice, notice here there, there's no word mentioned here in repent. In this phrase, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, prepare your heart for the coming of the Messiah. The thing is, is the Messiah was there. This is what the Jews were looking for. That's what they were praying for in their heart. God, send a king, send a Messiah, the deliverer that should deliver us. The problem is, is the kingdom that he came to deliver them from was not an earthly kingdom, but a spiritual kingdom. Because we know that the devil is the prince and the power of the air. He has a kingdom. He has power. He has authority. He had all authority until Jesus came and conquered death, hell, and the grave. And by the way, he conquered sin. He's the only one that has ever conquered sin. The Bible calls Job a man that was perfect and upright in all his ways. Actually, God called Job that. But it doesn't say that Job was sinless. Why wasn't Job sinless? Jesus said, God yet. Because he was born of Adam's seed. He had to be born again somewhere. Right? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received freely. What's that next word? In other words, don't be charged. Don't take... And where I come from, I'm telling you, they, they, they want to adhere to this. I mean, if a preacher accepts a salary or anything, some, and the old Reverend Baptists are still this way. Oh, it's a sin. It's, it, it, we, we've gave away thousands of CDs. We've gave away DVDs. Some people don't know that. I, you know, when I go back to West Virginia, you know what I hear all the time? I watch you all the time on Facebook preaching out of your church. Everywhere I go, I run into people because I have, a, I have probably more friends down in Mingo and Logan County and Wyoming County than what I do here. A lot, a lot of it's my family, but, but I, everywhere I go, people say, I watch you preach. I watch your services. We don't charge. We're not out there begging for money. I realize it takes money to run a television broadcast. Y'all ever see Wayne run and beg for money? I realize he's just on one station. Calvin Evans may mention, you know, hey, if, you, if, if we've blessed you and you want to send us a report, fine, but if you do, if you, we got something you need, brother, let us know. We'll send it to you if we can help you. I worry about all these people. Do you go to their you gotta to go to their website to order their gift offer for a suggested donation of. If I cannot 
Back in uh, 2001, I was approached by Reef Herman. He was a salesman at the radio, uh, in Point Pleasant, one of the radio stations, uh, AM 1030, about doing a radio broadcast. And I said, let me pray about it. And I prayed about it, and I felt like, Rhonda looked at me, she said, we can't afford another bill. We never put one dime out of our pocket to pay that radio station. I never went around asking people for blood money. I never mentioned it on the air. For six years, that thing ran on its own. When God opens a door for you, God will make a way. Amen. Now, I hope you know, I don't feel like I preach on tithing a lot. I don't, I, you know, I'm not saying I don't mention it, son. Uh, I, I kind of want to send some of these fellows and say, hey, I can't wait for you to get back to church because you, you know, you, you're going to have that big check to write because you ain't been to church in the last year. I mean, I know you're saving your tithes, right? <laughs> What are y'all laughing about? You don't think they are? <laughs> no, I ain't going home and bread, Gary. I thought they sent them on to the church. <laughs> yeah, there's an individual that either Dave or myself won every week that's their first concern is to take this to the church. Right, Dave? That's right. Second question is, is how is the church? How is the church? That's the kind of people we need. Amen? More of. More of. I'm not trying to bash anybody. Please don't think, think that I am. Uh, for the size of the church that we have, this church does, does good financially. I've said that for, you realize this Sunday will make eight years. I realize I've got to save up more money for the pie auction next year. <laughs> That's all right, Maddie. I just outbid you. <laughs> I'll take her hands around her. <laughs> Ain't going to gag her, huh? Now, you do know when you're weak, it's a, that's a bid too, right? <laughs> squirt, you squirm your eye. <laughs> Best thing to do is leave Maddie at the house. All right, <laughs> we got time for power. All right, but what I, you know, notice the the freely give here. Notice he does send them to the people that are well. Remember, all along he said the whole don't need a physician. They that are whole. When he talks about. Again, the people that are sick and afflicted and bound, the biggest problem in our society today is not COVID. The biggest problem in our society today is not cancer. The biggest problem in our society today is sin. Amen. If we can find a cure for sin, oh, wait a minute, we did. <laughs> But why, why isn't the world better? We have the cure. Because they won't accept it. But I'm telling you, I've seen some of the meanest people in the world sit in a church pew every week. I mean, the hardest in the world to get along with. Ain't got a good word for nobody. Y'all been around any of them people? That's a big dose to take, brother. Huh? That's a big dose of medicine to take. <laughs> They've been around forever. <laughs> I, let's go on for I get my, myself in trouble. I've, I've already have. Alright, verse number 9. Freely uh, provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses nor script for your journey neither two coats neither shoes nor yet stairs, for the workman is worthy of his meat. So this cancels out that belief that it's wrong for a preacher to take anything or a singer to take anything 
or a janitor, if you if whatever it is, I mean, I have never, I sat right here, David, I mean, there's several here can tell you, I sat right here. When they asked me how much money I had to pa- have to pastor this church, I said, I somewhere under a million dollars. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. I laughed. Did I not? You guys were here. Every year they would come to me, to, well, what are you thinking about a raise? I said, no. I know what the church has, all right? So thankful for what you do do. I, I, from the depths of our heart, we're, we're thankful. But... It ain't about that pay. I, I, that, that was my words. I said, that's not why I'm here. You do what you want to do. I am here because God, I feel God has led me here. And he, we've saw some wonderful things in the last, again, almost eight years. Uh, and into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who is worthy and there shall abide, and there abide till you go thence. And when you are come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. Uh, but if not, be not worthy, let not your peace return unto you. And whatsoever shall ye uh, receive of you, and whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. For verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than the day of judgment than for that city. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? They were utterly destroyed, wasn't they? So if God rained fire and brimstone down upon them, and it's going to be easier for them, I can't imagine what this is going to happen. I realize, uh, again, there have been houses that I have been told I'm not welcome. There have. There have been houses, I've went to church members' houses, and I can hear them talking on the other side of the door. Knock, 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 knock. And they not answer. And hear them, I mean, honestly, Dave and, and everything get quiet in the house. Like we ain't home. Well, it's really bad waiting here not welcome in church. That's really heartbreaking. I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> All right, so let's let's stop right there. At verse fifteen. We'll stop verse sixteen next time. All right.